NerdRotic.com. I know you expect a certain type of quality here at NerdRotic, and I'm sorry you're not going to get it from this video. I just don't want to put that much time into Doctor Who because interest is at an all-time low for the new era. Considering the ratings, we have a 57% drop from the first episode of season 11 to the first episode of series 12 in America and in the UK. But before I get started, if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking and sharing the videos. That is the only way independent creators like yours truly can stay competitive against the giant corporations like BBC and Disney and CBS that YouTube has decided to prioritize on this platform. Interestingly enough, this whole episode was a giant shot at Google and YouTube, and I doubt it has anything to do with the criticism they received here. I'm sure it's just a big coincidence. And did we have amazing women in this episode? You bet your ass. Were these amazing women written with any kind of character or personality? No, unfortunately not. And it's clear that it's a man afraid to write women. That's the biggest problem with this show. That's the biggest problem with this era. And I will get into it later in the video. We will discuss the plot a little bit, but the biggest thing that happened, and we can't bury the lead, is Gallifrey, once again, has been completely destroyed. It certainly looks like that course correction I spoke about in this video right here is happening. All it ends up being, though, is a bad David Tennant impression and borrowing heavily from multiple David Tennant plots. Filled with member berries. Remember Blink? Remember Doomsday? Remember the sound of drums? That's all this episode is. No new ideas and a pathetic attempt at making the Doctor feel intimidating once again. Sasha Dewan was much better as the master this time, and we got some genuine companion moments. There was good in this episode, but it's too little, too late. I did a couple of Rotten Tomato Doctor Who videos last year, and it got stuck at 21%. Very similar to what's happening with the fall of Skywalker right now. We get thousands of reviews added, and the percentage doesn't change up or down, very suspicious, but it looks like we get more of the same with Spyfall Part 1, where the audience score currently, at time of recording, is at 35%, and we will get to that. And yes, I'm mixing up a Rotten Tomatoes video with a review because, again, interest is at an all-time low with this show. And quite frankly, I think the news of the falling audience score on Rotten Tomatoes and the ratings dropping like a rock is much more interesting and entertaining than this show itself. Briefly, the plot. The first female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, was transferred to another realm by the aliens that look suspiciously like the ghosts from Doomsday and Army of Ghosts. The fam, as you remember, were in a crashing plane, but don't worry, they were saved by Chris Chimnall ripping off some of the plot points from Blink and using some timey-wimey stuff, and they ended up landing the plane with an app because it didn't require a cockpit. Originally, I thought we were dealing with two masters, Daniel Barton possibly being the Missy Master and Sasha Dewan possibly being the John Sim Master. This was not the case. Daniel Barton was just a mustache-twirling villain who wanted to kill humanity for reasons of research, and big spoiler, the big plot was to turn humanity into hard drives, and Earth would be a server farm. Get it? Because Google's bad. The first female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, finds herself in the realm of the Kasarvans, who are the aliens that look suspiciously like the ghosts from Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. She meets up with brilliant woman number one, who is Ada Lovelace, who the show tells us invented the computer, except for the one they found off the shores of Greece 2,000 years before Ada was born. But, as with all female characters in this show, she does brave and stunning things and stunning and brave things with the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker. In an attempt to keep the fam's portion of this episode interesting, Chris Chibnall then rips off the plot of The Sound of Drums, and they have to go off the grid because they are accused of hijacking Dan 
Daniel Barton's plane. In the meantime, the first female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, is transported to the year 1843 by the amazing Ada Lovelace, who has learned how to control the aliens that look suspiciously like the ghosts from Army of Ghosts and Doomsday, who are called the Kasarvans, who we are going to call the Kardashians because they're meaningless, shiny humanoid things. The master tracks the first female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, Ada Lovelace, and Charles Babbage, and they end up back in Charles Babbage's home. Then the doctor uses her Deus Ex Machina sonic screwdriver on the Silver Lady sculpture, which will come up later, to call forth one of the Cardassians, and she travels through time with the amazing, stunning, and brave Ada Lovelace in tow. The first female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, then ends up in 1943, exactly 100 years later, where they can meet another stunning and brave woman with no characterization who just acts like a plank of wood, just like Ada Lovelace does. The doctor constantly gives them over-the-top positive affirmation, and that's what passes for entertainment these days. And instead of focusing on what I think is very topical and a very interesting issue, which is privacy and big tech here in Silicon Valley, we have to go back to the tried and true, the fascists are coming and so are the supremacists, and we have some Nazis led by the master who is obviously using a perception filter. The first female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, the amazing, stunning, and brave Ada Lovelace, meet the amazing, stunning, and brave Noor Khan, who actually was Ada Lovelace and the first female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, are hidden by Miss Khan, and the Master is not able to find them. Since the last episode, the Master has been trying to hint to the first female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, that something is wrong back home, and her curiosity is piqued. So, she tries to contact the Master through telegraph using the sound of drums, you know... The heartbeats of a Time Lord, reminding us of the sound of drums. They meet on the Eiffel Tower, reminding us of City of Death. Then we get the exposition we have been waiting for, and we find out that that rumor I reported on might not have been totally right. It might be much, much worse. In the meantime, the fam finally start asking the right questions like, why are we following around the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker when she never tells us anything about her life? Then they decide to go after Daniel Barton using some of the gadgets they stole from Stephen Fry's C in the previous episode. Back on the Eiffel Tower, we get some exposition between the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker and the master. The master informs the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker that he is been back home to Gallifrey. The Gallifrey that was saved by all the doctors in the 50th anniversary. The Gallifrey that remains lost and the one that exiled Rassilon, which we'll get to later. The first female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, finds out that Gallifrey is gone. It's burnt. Everyone is dead. I love the concept of the time war, but I also equally loved how they brought Gallifrey back. And I like the Time Lords being around. And I hate this. Then we get the exposition scene where we find out Daniel Barton and the Master's diabolical plan to turn the human race into a bunch of hard drives, and he starts out by sacrificing his own mother because she didn't give him enough love and hugs as a kid. So this self-made man, Titan of Industries, entire motivation to kill off the human race is because he likes to innovate things. That's what we're told in the episode. It's pretty dumb. Daniel Barton kills his mom through the shiny Kardashian aliens using the Silver Lady sculpture in a giant airport hangar where the fam eventually catches up to him, but too late for mom. In the meantime, the doctor fools the master, rats him out to the Nazis, and escapes with stunning and brave Ada Lovelace and Noor Khan. First female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, then steals the master's TARDIS and takes Noor and Ada with her. Daniel Barton then starts monologuing to an audience and enacting his evil plot through the Silver Lady sculpture and starts turning the human race into hard drives. So it turns out the Kardashians were indeed spies, but we don't really figure out what they are. They weren't very stable in our universe, so they were just portal creatures. And, of course, the first female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, along with the stunning and brave Noor Khan and Ada Lovelace, go and do some of that timey-wimey. They go back and undo all of Daniel Barton and the Master's plans, and they arrive just in time to save the day. The doctor puts Ada Lovelace and Noor Khan back, erases their memories... 
Again, not a mention of the unfortunate end for the real life Norcon, which again is very sad. And now we get to the important bit concerning my rumor and the Time Lords. The first female doctor contemplates what the master told her in front of a giant crystal dildo in the ugliest TARDIS. The first female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, decides to go back to Gallifrey and we find out it was indeed destroyed. This activates a communication where the master confesses it was he who destroyed the Time Lords and Gallifrey. The master tells the first female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, that their entire existence is based on on a lie, and this is a theory that I might be interested in if it wasn't 2020 and we weren't coming off of Series 11 and we weren't dealing with the very politically correct BBC. So we know exactly where this is going. To quickly recap, my rumor was there might be multiple cycles of regenerations and that the Doctor was originally a female, but... Maybe the spirit of that rumor is right, but it's not exactly right. I think it's going to be far worse. And with the BBC and anything current year, even in 2020, you have to go for the woke. We have been warned that Chris Chibnall and company would be going back and mucking around in the Time Lord's past, but I didn't think they would actually destroy canon. But considering what we've seen from Star Trek Discovery and in the fall of Skywalker, and more importantly, in The Last Jedi, I certainly believe they will do something. I believe they will destroy previous Doctor Who canon to make a point and to score political points. What is one of the hot button issues out there? Well, colonialism, the patriarchy. What is a perfect symbol of that in Doctor Who? The Time Lords. Now, I hope I'm wrong, but when I saw this quick little image of a little girl, the first thing that went through my head was the Time Lords stole this technology. They appropriated it from a race or a singular being, this timeless child. I always thought we could get through the Jody era. It would be three seasons, then we'd move on, and maybe we could course correct back into a thrilling fun show for everyone but this will be damage you cannot undo and again if you think they won't do it you haven't seen star trek discovery and disney star wars they will destroy your mythos in a hot minute and somebody mentioned it in my live stream if stephen moffat is the jar jar abrams of the united kingdom then chris chibnall is the rian johnson hope is not a strategy but unfortunately that is all we have left and we have to hope that the ratings keep falling again for spyfall part one they were abysmal for a festive special the lowest rated of all time for current doctor who well off what they did in resolution and much much worse when you compare it with the premiere episode of series 11 and it looks like it's more of the same the ratings have just come in in the uk for spyfall part 2 and they are even lower than for the previous episode and guess what these two episodes are the best ratings this show is going to get. It's just going to be diminishing returns as we go out. And I will be very interested to see how this show is doing in early February or even late January. Disney Star Wars destroyed their main character, Luke Skywalker, and the other popular character, Han Solo. Doctor Who has done the same and they have arrived at the same reckoning and as we experience the David Chappelle effect which leveled up last night by the way with Ricky Gervais which was brilliant by the way so if you haven't seen that monologue go ahead and watch it because that was a cultural moment that was the pendulum swinging and unfortunately Doctor Who is well behind the times and all you have to do is go check out the Rotten Tomatoes score for Spyfall Part 1. Now, the critics still seem to be loving it, but not as much as before. And when you have a show that's just woke and nothing else, when you take away a little bit of that woke, it tends to piss off the access media, which we should continue to do. And I hope more of the franchises start listening to the fans a little more than paid access media who don't really care about this stuff. Now, last season, it's still at 21%. This season, 
35%. So let's see what the people have to say. One star, very disappointed. They massacred this series, says Sean P. One star, last season Doctor Who hit the rock bottom. This season, it took out the drill and went even lower, says Tom J. Half star, I have been a fan since I started watching growing up in school. Season 11 left me disappointed and season 12 has taken a new low. I have never seen so much SJW woke inserted in a TV show. Sad, very sad indeed. Interesting that the critics think it's amazing, but the audience doesn't. Not surprised. Troy N. Half star. Hal G. In the past 15 years, the quality of Doctor Who has ranged between cerebral sci-fi and utter crap, and the most recent seasons seem to have their shoes stuck in utter crap while previous iterations of the Doctor have come across as all-knowing, bumbling geniuses, the most recent iteration comes across as a bumbling woman who can't do anything right, but the scenes overall aren't done very well. Like a chase scene on motorbikes, the car is beside or behind them, and the bullets are glancing off the front of the bikes. Ugh. Doctor Who went from A-movie material with a B-movie budget to B-movie all around. One star, Lisa G. Writing was better, but Jodie Whittaker is still terrible. So badly miscast. Is she trying to be David Tennant, Matt Smith? Presenter of a toddler show? Such a disappointment. She ruins the show. Last season, there was enough Whovians out there who still cared enough to be angry at the direction this show has taken under the BBC and Chris Chibnall. Jodie Whittaker was an awful choice and a lazy choice, and it wasn't even Chris Chibnall's first choice. And the gimmick of changing your main character into a female is starting to wear off, and all you're left with is a bad impression of David Tennant and Matt Smith and a bad impression of the RTD era. Now, we are told that the production has started for the next series with Chibnall and Whitaker. I'm very curious to see how many episodes this series will have if the ratings continue to fall, which they will. If you think I'm happy about this, I'm not. I'm pissed. My favorite show in the world was sacrificed on the altar of political correctness. Sacrificed for a gimmick, and I'm not sure it will come back this time. And the most unfortunate thing for Doctor Who in this new era of the streaming service is the interest is at rock bottom here in the States, right back to where it was before the new era even started. Well done, BBC. You had an international phenomenon, and now all you have is a tired old series. Until next time, everyone have a great day. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like what you heard. If you didn't like what you heard, well, thanks for listening this long. I will see you in the next video. Nerderotic.com. Please subscribe.